Good afternoon, welcome to Run Like Gaming. Uh, so we're going to be doing a video on a game called Power Grid. Uh, this is the board that you're seeing right now, which is the map of the U.S. Uh, and I'm going to go over the details of each of these uh, different mechanics in the game, how to play through an entire uh, game itself, as well as some of the background stuff as far as uh, if you're having to run it for a group that's wanting to play the game, uh, you can also use this kind of as a reference in order to know kind of what you're doing on the end of the person running the game as well. Because uh, as a player it's pretty easy, you just kind of follow the steps, but there's a few small things that you do outside of that if you're uh, having to make the game kind of work uh, in, as it's played through as well. So the first couple things we're going to go through is the basic start of the game. Each player is going to receive 50 uh, money, which comes in the form of like this Monopoly money type stuff. Uh, a lot of times we like to try to use poker chips. Poker chips are really good if you have those around. Uh, then you can use poker chips to actually just kind of toss them around and then uh, people can calculate their money off of that. Uh, but for the video itself, you know, this money is easy enough to use. Uh, you usually give out four tens and two fives uh, to come out to 50. Uh, otherwise, with a very basic uh, setup with the US or Germany, it doesn't really have any special rules, whereas some of the expansions and other maps you can get uh, do have different rules that you'll have to read through the book and makes it a lot different than your normal map. Uh, for this particular video though, we're only going to be going over uh, what you would do for the rules of US or Germany, because uh, they actually have the same rule set as each other. So, uh, Whereas if you played like India or North Korea or South Korea, you know, North Korea, South Korea, they're very different from this map and they have different mechanics and different things that make them a little bit uh, strange compared to those ones. So at the start of the game we are going to pretend like we are only playing with three people in this. Now with three people you're supposed to subtract eight of these power plants. Um, normally what would happen is you would separate plant number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is going to be your current markets. Uh, you have your future market on the bottom, and then your current market on the top. And I'll go over more details of what that uh, actually means as far as the game goes. And um, so if we have everything else. You'll also separate phase three, which come on like a gray card that says has a number three on it. And you'll also separate the power plant 13, which is a green power plant. And we'll go over more details on that as well. So at this point, we will go ahead and remove eight of these. And it's more so just to make sure that phase three triggers at a decent amount of time. Because if you play with only three people, then they have to cycle through a lot more power plants to ever hit phase three. Uh, these eight plants you remove. Uh, you will not be able to actually look at, and it's also determined on the number of players. So, in a larger number of game, you know, players in a game, you're going to re remove fewer plants than you would, let's say, a three-player game or a two-player game. Now, two-player game, I would usually not advise playing uh, very often. So there is a robot mechanic that you can put into the game to where two-player is playable. Uh, usually, though, it's not very advised to play with two-player because some of the mechanics don't really function very well. So once you have your eight plants removed, at this point you're going to throw the 13 on top and the phase three on the bottom of the deck. And this is going to be your new deck at this point. Um, also at this point we are going to uh, be removing a few things from the game as well. Uh, with three players you're only going to have three regions on the board. This mostly is to help uh, push people into each other and therefore it kind of creates a little more conflict uh, within the game itself. So the three players that are playing can choose which sections of the boards that they want to actually use in this. Uh, for this particular game, let's just say that we're going to use green, yellow, and red. Just a nice central area here. And they do have to be connecting, so you can't just be like, well, I'm going to use this uh, dark blue color and then green and brown, because I don't think the game would really work out very well if you did that. And 
And then you just want something to be put on there. This might help players um, know that you can't really expand there. Uh, as I, Again, usually what I do is I put down money, then I put poker chips in on, on each of these, so that way they don't move very well. Right now, with just paper money on it, it might blow if there was any kind of wind uh, coming through at all. So at this point, we know that we can build within these three areas. We now have our market set up. We have our plants for the rest of the game in this pile here. These will be your resource track. This is something that will constantly fluctuate as you're playing through the game. Uh, the red ones are uranium. They start out at 14 with a base map. Trash is on this yellow one here. They're a little bit bigger. They start out at the 7 cost. And you'll see the cost on these little coin uh, things on top of each of these blocks. The oil will start out at 3 on this map, and then coal starts out at 1. And the expansions for this game are usually consist of a small rule book and a new map. Now each of the locations are going to have different resources as far as which ones are really quick to produce. Uh, for example, I believe Russia, being that it's a very big uh, oil producer, it tends to start out with a lot more oil at the start of the game, and it also builds it up a little bit quicker as well. Whereas they're not as big into coal, though they still have coal that moves up and stuff like that. So I mean, um, so each map's a little bit different as far as how it plays, but as I said with the base ones, it's kind of like your vanilla version of the game. Uh, at that point, you'll also put down three houses, one for each player, uh, on this tracker here, which will be the number of uh, of cities a person has, and this one over here, which is going to be the the turn marker. This determines what turn order everything is currently in at that particular time. Uh, the next thing is that should be all the setup itself. So at this point, what we're going to do is go through what you do during a turn, and we're just going to jump into the turn itself. Now with the first turn, it's going to be a little bit different from all the turns after that. So this very first turn is going to be a little bit out of order, because what you actually do on the first turn is you buy power plant first. Once you buy power plant, then you can determine play order. Normally you would determine your turn order at the start of the round, and then you buy power plants. But in the very first round of the game, you'll do buy power plant first. Uh, so at this point, the three players at the table are going to choose one of these power plants at the top here. So we have a three, four, five, and a six. And it will be a little bit difficult to probably see the symbols on it. Uh, this one right here though, uh, if it's able to be seen really well, is going to have two barrels of oil on the bottom there will be a number on the top left, and then a house with a number in it. So the resource amount is, it takes two oil, and if you burn two oil in this, you could power one house. The number is the, the cost of the power plant to start the auction with it. So if I put up this particular plant, it will cost me three to begin that auction. So I have to start off the bid with I'm going to bid three, then the next person can go higher. So that maybe the next person wants to bid four, the next person wants to bid five, and it continues around until someone uh, has put up more money towards that than anyone else. Uh, this particular one is a four. It is going to have two coal uh, to burn for one house. It starts out at number four. This other one here is a five that is going to be a hybrid. The hybrid can use coal or oil in any combination of it. Two for one, so if you burn two of either of those, you can power one house. It also costs you five to start out with. Uh, number six is one of the yellow ones, which is a trash plant. It requires one trash to power one house, and it starts out at six. So what we do in the first turn is determine randomly somehow which person is going to throw up the first plant. So let's say if they throw up the number four. 
At this point, it's going to keep going around and around. So the next person may bid five, I may bid six. Then the next person passes, the next person passes. At this point, I would have this particular plan. Uh, once you do that, you're going to reveal from the top of the deck the next plant. And now we are going to go ahead and move the plants here onto the board so we can kind of. Now, this will always be in numerical order. So the five and the six will be pushed over, and the seven comes up to the top row. So now seven can actually be picked as well, because normally you cannot pick the plants at the bottom, unless on specific maps that have specific rules for that. In the base version, you, do, you cannot do that. So at this point, now they can bid on the three, five, six, or seven. So at this point, we have, let's say, the next person wanted to grab the seven, and let's say he bought it for 10. You'll reveal the next plant, which is a 40. And on the first turn, everyone does have to get a power plant. Uh, the last person, though, we're going to give the number 3. At this point, you will determine play order. Uh, first, it's always determined by number of cities, so because no one has a city yet, we will not be basing on cities. Then it goes to number of plants. I'm going to move these over here real quick. So when we determine the play order for power plants, it goes by highest power plant to lowest. In this case, we are going to say the player on our far left here is blue yellow on this side, and then I will be black player. So blue is going to be first, because he has a seven plant. Uh, I would be second, because I have a four plant. Yellow will be third, because they have a third plant, a three plant. And pretty much as we go through the different uh, turns here, you can use this card here, which comes with the base game itself, to kind of walk you through what's going on. Now we've already bought the power plan to determine play order. Normally this would be the phase two, uh, at which point the first player always begins the auction for a power plan. Now the reason why the first player starts on this one is it's usually not as beneficial to be the first person. Because how the auction actually works is that you can only get one power plant on a single turn. Uh, so you can't buy, say, two different power plants on the same round. If I were to, let's say if I were to, uh, Black Heroes to buy a power plant, they can no longer buy additional power plants, so now blue and yellow are the only ones contesting for the next one. So let's say if blue were to buy the next plant, then yellow can pretty much buy whatever plant they want left, as long as it's on the top row, and they have no one to compete against. So there's no one to raise the prices on them, so it's pretty much just a... Whatever they want, they can pay the base value for. Uh, at this point, we're going to buy raw material. You can only buy material for the types of plants you have. You can only buy up to two times what you could actually, uh, what you'd burn for it. So, for example, uh, this oil plant here uh, it takes two oil to burn for one house, which means since it takes two, he can store up to four on it. So essentially he can burn it this round and next round from what he can store on it. So at this point, um, with raw material, you always start out with the last player. It is uh, mostly to be a catch-up mechanic, uh, because as you fall further back in plays, that means you're probably doing worse than the other players. You know, Normally speaking, that's usually how it would go. Now you can actually do be further back on the turn order, and still be doing better than the other players, but it is possible that it could be the other way around too. So Yellow's going to now buy some resources. So what, we, what he would probably want to do, since he's the first player, he may want to stock up now, or he may just want to buy just enough so that way he doesn't have to... Well, let's say in this particular case, he knows that Seven over here is going to buy a lot of oil. And because Seven's going to buy a lot of oil, or the blue player here, he might want to stock up now. So at this point we're going to buy four 
so that we can maximize what he has on it. Now, for each of these particular ones here, uh, you'll go look at the gold cost here, and they are three apiece. So at this point, three, six, nine, and the next ones are four, so he's going to buy one of those. So that'll be $13. He would then pay 13 to the bank, and then the bank would give change or whatever, but basically he'll pay the 13 to the bank. Then he puts it on the power plant that he wants to store it on. You can move it between power plants that store that. So let's say if he has another oil plant, he could store, you know, move them over there if needed. They're not stuck on that particular plant. Now let's say with four, which is myself, I'm the only one in coal right now. So it probably doesn't benefit me a whole lot to dig too far into it. But for now what I'll do is I'll take all the ones. So there are three of these within the one bracket. So I'll pay, take those three and it'll cost me three money to do. I could store up to four, but it probably would not be needed. And then I would pay the three to the bank and then I would be good with that. Now lastly, seven would require three barrels of oil to power two houses. So he's probably gonna want at least the three. So each of these two are gonna cost four a piece. So it's eight plus five is 13. He's probably only going to want to take just enough to power what he can because right now it's very expensive. Because when you think about it, for those three oil that he paid for, it will cost him 13. Whereas the four oil that this one bought was 13. So as you can see, the prices are going to quickly jump as you're buying more resources. Now at this point, uh, everyone bought resources, it now goes to building phase. The last player always begins. In this case, yellow gets to choose the first location they want to be in. Now, how the map itself works is you're going to have each of these cities. There's going to be three numbers within the city. There's a 10, a 15, and a 20. With a 10, that is when you first build a city in it, and there are no other cities in it, you would build in the 10 slot. You can only build on the 10 slot during phase one. Phase one is basically the, the first uh, portion of the game. To where, um, and then phase two will be triggered once seven cities are hit. Phase three is when the cart comes up here. So it's kind of later in the game when you can actually build in the other sections. Usually once one hits seven cities, you can then expand into the, the 15. Once you hit phase three card and the market here, then you can actually build in the third one. Uh, so at this point, the very first round of the game, you can build one city wherever you want to and pay whatever the base value is. So let's say if I want to build, so it's gonna start out with yellow. So let's say yellow wants to build in, we'll say they're gonna build down here in Memphis. They are only going to pay the building fee for now, because this is the very first city of theirs. So they're going to be charged $10 for this one. He can only power one, because he cannot power this plant twice in a row. So he can only power one city. So he has no reason to really expand further. So we'll go ahead and move him up to the one city here, because this is the city count for each of the players. Uh, next thing is, we will then move to black because they are the next one in the turn order. Now black can only power one as well, so probably just going to build the one. Now since yellow moved here in Memphis, maybe I might want to take a lot of the cheaper connections down here, and we're going to go with Savannah. And that's going to also cost me 10. So at this point, Black has a city, yellow has a city. Black does not probably want to get another city because... Actually, let's go and build another city. So black's going to expand a little bit further into uh, Jacksonville. Now, how the expansion normally works is that, let's say if I wanted to expand from Savannah to Atlanta, there's a little number between the cities, which is a connection fee. In this case, it's a seven with a big circle around it, and then it goes to Atlanta. So if I wanted to connect from Savannah to Atlanta, 
I would pay the seven dollars for connection and then the ten to start up in that particular location. So it would cost me seventeen to go from Savannah to Atlanta. Now if you go from Savannah to Jacksonville, there's actually no connection fee here. So at that point I could just pay the ten, which in this case would be a little bit cheaper for me. So at this point I pay twenty for these two cities. So black is going to jump up to two cities. And at this point, Black says, well, I don't really need anything else, so I'm going to stop. Now, Blue can power two cities, but takes three barrels of oil. So at this point, they are going to want to at least have those two cities. So what they're going to do is, let's go ahead and put them in Atlanta. Because what they're actually going to try to do is block Black from expanding too far out. So they're going to try to jump in there and cause a lot of problems for them. And then we're going to connect down to Birmingham. So it cost me 10 to put one in Atlanta. Now it's going to cost me 3 for connection fee and another 10 to get into Birmingham. So total for these two cities will cost me 23. So at this point, black has two cities, blue has two cities, yellow has one. And at this point, Blue's now going to end their turn. Then once we do the turn order here, the next phase is Bureaucracy. That's going to be the last phase of the, uh, this particular round. And for this, we're going to do the Get Money phase to start out with. Now on the turn, uh, the turn tracker here, well not the turn tracker, but the uh, thing that tells you what you do during your turn, on the back of it, you're going to see a bunch of numbers here that state uh, different numbers. On the left, you'll see a little house with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it goes all the way up to 20. And then on the right, you're going to see like another number. It's kind of like a, a euro symbol almost. Uh, but on that side, you're going to see like 10, 22, 33, 44, 54. And gradually, as it gets further down, you're making less money per house, but it does give you a, a little bit more money for the total amount of houses. So like per house, uh, at one house, you're making 11, well, 22 for that one house. At, let's say, 10 houses, you're making 105. So the efficiency of how much you're making usually gets a little bit less but you're definitely making a lot more money with more houses. So you definitely want to keep expanding and building more houses to get more money. But that also means too you want to be more efficient over the course of time, which as more power plants come out, they tend to become a little more efficient with what they're doing. Like as I said with uh, the 7 plant, it takes three barrels of oil to power two houses. Whereas if you look at plant number 40, which came up, uh, this is two barrels of oil equals six houses. So it's very, very efficient, but it's a little bit more costly to start out with because to start out that bid, you're going to need at least $40. If you spend $40 if you're 50, you're not going to really have money to do anything else. So it's kind of one of those, you kind of need money to build up to it in order to improve your power plants. So at this point, uh, each of these players are going to get a little bit of money on this. So it doesn't really matter what order you do the bureaucracy in as far as getting money and all that stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and have each player power stuff. So three is going to use two oil to power one house, which means they are going to get $22. Uh, blue player is going to use three oil to power two houses, which will give them 33. And lastly, black here is going to use two coal power of one house to get 22. Now blue did spend more money to actually get those resources than say like yellow did but he kind of had to do that if they wanted to actually make additional money on it. Uh, so after you get money uh, this is going to be some background stuff for the people that are kind of running the game itself. So the first thing they're going to do is during phase one and phase two, uh, right now we're in phase one, 
you place highest power plant under the stack. So in this case, we're going to take the highest power plant, which would be that 40, and you'll put it at the on the bottom of the deck itself. So when phase three happens, you're going to see a lot of these plants come back. And then you take the top plant, and you throw that into the market. Next, uh, if it was phase three, you'd remove the lowest power plant from the game. And then you would replace that with a new one. And then restock raw material. Now, with raw material, you're going to have your rule book. And on the back of the rule book itself, you're going to get uh, like a chart back here. And depending on the number of players you have, it will give you a different amount of resources. And depending on the map you have, it will also give you a different amount of resources. So with a three player game here, you're going to get four coal during the round. You can only use, you can only put back on the market what's currently out here. So we only have two coal right now. Since some people are storing coal, so only two will arrive on the, the map here. And then two oil. Now considering right now they're burning five oil around, it's going to make oil very expensive very quickly. Then one garbage will arrive, and then one uranium will arrive. And as you can see, uranium is really expensive right now, but it drops really quickly as because there's only one uranium in each of these brackets. But it has to get through this little block here first. So if I bought uranium right now, it'll be 12. The next turn, if another uranium drops, it'll go down to 10. Then to 8, then 7, 6, 5. So nuclear plants can be good later, but right now it's probably not very profitable to get uranium. Now at this point, we're going to determine play order. So someone, whoever wants to do it, would now work on the turn order here. So what you're going to go on first is the number of cities. Now we know that yellow has one city, so we know for sure, since the other two have two cities, yellow is going to be last. So now blue and black both have two cities. So what we're going to look at now is it's going to be based on power plant after that. So seven and then four. So seven will be first, black will be second. Now at this point, it's going to continue through the turns again. So after we determine play order, then we buy power plants. It kind of goes through the same motions as we did before as far as auctioning goes. Uh, on the auction phase, the first player will always begin. So, yeah, so in this particular case, blue will start off because they are a first player. They will then pick one of those plants, they will auction it, and then whoever gets it will get it. During the turns after the first one, you are not obligated to get a power plant. So if you choose not to get a power plant on turn two or any turn after that, you're not obligated to get one. Now you're going to probably want them if they're efficient enough or good enough to actually be there uh, in order to expand further and put down more cities. Now in a three player game or higher you have a maximum number of cities of three. You cannot have more than uh, sorry, you cannot have more than three power plants. So you can't get a bunch of these low plants and just power a bunch of stuff. You can only get three plants total. Now once you hit your fourth plan, you have to take one of your plants you currently have, you remove it from the game, and then you replace it with a new one you just bought. And it's your choice of which one you want to get rid of. Now this is going to continue on um, for each of these phases here. So we determine play order, buy power plant, then you buy your raw material, then you do building the phase again. They do bureaucracy again. And it's going to be kind of the same motions over and over and over again. Until you hit phase two. So we're going to want to expand a few things out here. I'm going to go over a few additional rules in the process. Just to kind of give some explanations. So, 
let's go ahead and put down some cities here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five. All right, so let's say black has made it to six cities, blue has made it to five, yellow has made it to seven. This is going to now initiate phase two. Phase two is only going to start, though, during the next turn. We don't ever start it on the same turn that it was initiated. So during the building phase, which is going to be uh, step four in it, um, you will not be able to continue building into other cities until next turn. So with this currently, of course turn order, there will be probably better power plants for each player, um, but as far as cities go, this would initiate phase two uh, once the next turn begins. So like during bureaucracy, which is the end of the turn, you're going to still restock resources according to phase one. So at that point, you would still do the same thing with putting the highest power plant on the bottom of the deck at the end of the turn. So let's say if you were to end your turn, it'll still do the phase for that. And this is uh, one of the nuclear plants. Normally, the nuclear plants only require one nuclear resource, and then it powers a certain amount of cities. Usually it's pretty efficient overall. It just depends on the market itself as to whether or not it'll be really cost efficient to do. Uh, so at this point, there's a few other things we're going to go over as well. Is expanding through other territory. Now, as I mentioned, you cannot build into another city unless phase two has been initiated. So sometimes, if you're playing with other players, they may try to block you off from going to other cities. Now, how the game actually does work, though, is that you can actually build through other cities, but you have to do connection fees. So let's say Blue wanted to build uh, past Black here, but she's in Riley right now, but he wants to build over here into Norfolk. He'll pay the 7 connection fee, plus a 3 connection fee, and then 10 to build up. Or let's say if Blue wanted to expand down to Cincinnati, or up to Cincinnati, from Atlanta, it paid five connection fee plus six connection fee plus ten to start up a bit. You know the city itself. So it'll cost you eleven plus ten, twenty one. So what you can see from that is that it will become more costly to expand through other cities. As let's say Blue's just having a really bad game. So let's say if you wanted to expand from one of these three cities to Cincinnati. You could do connection fee of 11 plus connection fee of 3, so 14, plus connection fee of 5, uh, 19, plus connection fee of 6, 25, plus 10, 35. So from going this city to this city will be $35, which is quite expensive for a single city. There might be other methods of getting there cheaper, maybe say 12, 12, and 7. So 24, 31. So it might be actually cheaper going through this way. Or the 7, 7, 12. So you can just kind of go through different connections and see which one's a little bit more cost effective to do. So that is an option as well. So if you wanted to build to another city through someone else's, you can do connection fees around all the way up to that location. So that would be what happens when you initiate phase two. Now if phase two occurs, that's when you hit seven cities. It is a little bit different depending on the number of players. Now something I usually do use, if you go to Board Game Geek, you can actually get on um, some of these player guide things which are really beneficial for uh, messing with different player numbers. So for example, uh, on this little player guide, uh, this is for a four player game. As you can see, you would remove four power plants from the game. You'd play with four regions. Uh, bases per player, sorry, uh, plants per player is three. 
Phase 2 is initiated in seven, uh, 7 cities, and the game ends on 17 cities. And we'll go over a little more details with that as well. And also, they have a chart on the bottom here, which is the restock amount. This is mostly only Apple, app. it only pretty much works with this particular map, with the US or Germany. In most situations, a lot of the other maps have different resources and stuff like that, but it still uses a lot of these up here. But there are a few small differences. Primarily if you were going to play either a six player game or a two player game. As it generally is not advisable to use a two player game, but it is still possible. Because for example with a six player game, six cities will initiate phase two, fourteen cities will initiate their last round. So once you have fourteen cities, it'll initiate the last round of the game. With a two player game, the big differences with that is you can have up to four power plants. It takes 10 cities to hit phase two, and it takes 21 cities to end the game. So there are some minor differences depending on the player number, but usually players three to five is going to pretty much be the same number all the time. So with um, phase two, as I mentioned, uh, everything will be the same otherwise. Now when phase 3 hits, phase 3 will be initiated when this card is eventually drawn. It starts out at the, at the bottom of the deck at the beginning of the game. When that card gets drawn, the plants will gradually go down to 6 power plants. Once it goes down to 6 power plants, let's just say that 2 of these power plants were bought, and we'll say that phase 3 was initiated. During phase three, you can build in any of the three spots. You would always start out with the low one first. Um, so let's say if there's no second slot, you can build in the second slot. Let's say if it's on phase three, you can build on third slot. The third slot costs you 20 though, to expand into it. Also with phase three, one of the big differences is that you can buy any uh, plant that's on the market currently. So you can use that as a, um, so a lot of the higher plants on the future market might be beneficial to get at this point since you have access to them. Uh, some other differences will be that during bureaucracy, you're actually gonna remove the lowest power plant from the game and it goes completely out of the game and then you replace it with a new plant. The next thing is that with uh, phase three and two, there are different amounts of resources that will be dropped because the resources do change you know, from phase to phase. And that's really the big differences between like phase one, phase two, phase three. So, we're gonna drop just a bunch of, yeah, so we'll just say that most of this map is filled up with houses, so you have a bunch of houses in different places here. Now, what's going to occur now is, let's say phase three is initiated, we're actually going to initiate the last turn of the game. So on the last turn of the game, uh, with a three player game, is when you hit 17 cities. Now. Yeah, so once you hit the 17 cities, uh, it's going to come down to whoever can power the most cities when you do bureaucracy. So at the end of the game, when you normally get money, you are not going to get money this time. What you're actually going to do is power how ma however many cities you can to try and win the game. Now why this is important is let's say yellow expanded all the way to 17 cities, black expanded to 15, blue expanded to 14. So as you can see, yellow looks like they're winning right now. But let's say yellow can only power 12 cities. But they own 17. Black is at 15, but can power all 15. Blue has 14, but can power 14. So what's going to happen here is that when they go to power cities at the end, 
Actually, let's uh, change this around a little bit. So yellow can power only 12. Black can only power 14. Blue can only power 14. But black does have 15 cities. They just cannot power all of them right now. So when they go to power, we know that yellow can only power 12. Black and blue can only power 14. So at this point, we know that yellow is not going to win. They cannot power more cities than black or blue. So at this point, it goes to a sort of tiebreaker between black and blue. So the next determining factor as far as who would win this game, uh, since they both can power 14 right now, will be who has the most money at the end of the game. So the first win condition is by who can power the most number of cities at the end of the game. Even though yellow initiated the last round, they were not able to power everything they had. Blue and black, even though they have fewer cities, was able to power more than yellow. So therefore they were able to beat yellow. So let's say if blue had $20 left, black had $35 left, black would win this particular game. And that's actually pretty much the rules as a whole for the game itself. There's a couple small things to also take into consideration as you're playing. Is that once your number of cities of any particular player, so let's say if blue is at seven cities, let's say they're all at seven cities, blue, black, and yellow, you would remove any power plants from the game that have a lower power plant number than the number of cities currently that any single player owns. So right now we would remove six and five from the game because we have more cities than those power plants that exist. Normally at that point you would reveal two more plants and you put them into the market. And that's pretty much the game of Power Grid. As I said, each map's a little bit different. Uh, so if you play China, it's a very much a planned process of playing different cities. North Korea, South Korea, they actually have split markets. Uh, so with North Korea and South Korea, you have a North market and a South market. And there's different rules that play with that game map as well. India has a very weird way of playing. It um, doesn't really feel like power anymore. It has similar mechanics, but it plays really, really odd. So that's why I said each map is going to be very different as far as how it's played out and how the game itself functions. So playing one map is going to give you a very different feel than playing a different map. As I said, with like Russia, they tend to produce a lot of oil. So knowing that there's going to be a lot more oil in that particular game may make you want to build more oil plants because oil plants may be more valuable, being that the price of oil is going to generally be lower. Whereas in like your base game, coal starts out very cheap and it restocks very quickly. But also you have to pay attention to what other uh, power plants other players have. Let's say if everybody has tons of coal plants, maybe coal is not a thing for you to jump in as well. Because if you jump into it, it's going to be very pricey already. Now you're making it more pricey because you're now in a market too. But let's say if trash isn't building up and no one's actually in trash, maybe trash might be beneficial enough to jump into. Even though it's a little more pricey, not as many people are you know, using that resource. Because let's say if trash made all, all the way up to the cost of two, and no one's actually using trash, then it's going to be very cheap for you to run it, especially if coal or oil is at seven apiece. So, different pros and cons of, you know, plans you can do as you play through. Uh, so that is the how to play Power Grid game. Uh, definitely watch for future videos. There'll be more videos of different games being played, and I'll kind of go through explanations of how to play each of those games. So thank you for watching Gaming. Yeah, have a good day.